just wait till we get to October because these games, like, they really are special, and it is heightened. It's like every other sport, you know. You kind of get rid of all the middling shit that kind of drags everything down. You get the best players and the best teams, and then the best moments happen. Like, that Yankees game last night, I mean, Yankees kind of no life all game. They're down 3-1 going into the eighth, and a guy like Aaron Judge, who is arguably one of the best players, he's going to win AL MVP this year. It's kind of him and Shohei carrying everything. He hits a massive two-run homer in the eighth inning to tie the game off Emmanuel Classe, who arguably yeah. is the best closer in baseball. So we're getting a lot of these like good-on-good good situations. We talked about Ju- uh, Judge versus Skeens in the All-Star game. You get a lot more of those in the playoffs. And then, boom, right after that, Classe gives up a home run to John Carlos Stanton, the Yankees, who had no life all night, all of a sudden. Are back up. to back, Jack. Yeah, Ooh, two it, outs, it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the bottom of the eighth inning, kind of go now or go home. And everyone's thinking, hey, you know, Yankees are going to go up 3 0 in this thing. They're going to be done. The Yankees' bullpen has been absolutely lights out. Mm. And then, boom, bottom of the ninth inning, oh. you know. Pinch runner, John Casey, um, God, what's his last name? John Casey Noel. They call him Big Christmas. Hit two outs, hits uh, what looked to be, I mean, you know, obviously a no doubter. I, I He might have hit that thing a thousand feet. <laughs> I think they said that's the first time uh, in the history of mm-hmm. the playoffs that there's been a pinch hit two run homer to tie the game. So going into extras, I mean, it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh. Like it really did kind of feel like, hey, mm. whichever one of these teams is going to get the last at bat is going to win this game. Yankees, uh, you know, don't really do anything in in their half of the inning. And then in the bottom of the 10th, David Fry hits a walk-off blast to... to what? To, yeah, exactly. He's already <laughs> he's already had one um, earlier in the postseason against Detroit. He does it again. So for a Guardians team who was looking at being down 3-0 and, and basically having this season over, they get... Arguably one of the, I mean, for me, that like that was the one of the most, if not the most memorable postseason mm-hmm. baseball game that I've watched in the last twenty years, maybe. Just incredible, and that's what you know. You get the money ball thing, like, hey, it's hard to be, it's hard not to be romantic about baseball. It's because of games like this. It's just like the guys you want to see you and expect to show up. They do show up, and then you got a team like Cleveland who doesn't have the big stars that New York has, but they're just scrappy, and it really is like, hey, they're they're gonna give everything they have it's not over until the last out and that's why these games have been so good because outside of the other series which we'll talk about a little bit it's kind of largely been a blowout the Dodgers have kind of just been handling the Mets but this (laughs) this this Yankees Guardian series every single one of these games has been close and it's just it's kind of like you know if you're a fan of either team you're kind of clenching your bunghole every inning like (laughs) man we really need one here you know and and they kind of like I, I said it earlier in the week when we were talking about it just underscores the importance of like scoring early and then kind of staying pat but just the amount of home runs i mean we have a hembo stat so like that game that was just the second postseason game all time to feature four game tying or go ahead runs in the eighth inning or later which is just crazy that never happens it it's happened once before and it was the between cleveland and uh, the red sox in 95 so it's just like you're you're getting something special every single night it seems like and the games being on back to back nights is kind of awesome cuz now the the players are are getting in a little bit more of a groove it's kind of more like the regular season where you can have your day to day be the same and you don't have a bunch of off days. So yeah, baseball's been delivering especially on nights when, you know, we have a Thursday night football game that that kind of stunk. Absolute crap and congrats to the Dodgers seemingly just about that. Yeah. With the match, you know, yeah. they go in. Sure. They walk to quote Kirk Cousins. You know, they walked into their trap. You know, mm-hmm. and then took their trap. You know, mm-hmm. that is took over their trap. Shohei Otani getting into the mix. Aaron Judge getting into the mix. I think is also massive news. That's leadoff, second pitch of the game. Yep. Shohei Otani hits a dinger, and uh, that's coming off of the news about the 12 or 13 million people watching in Japan. Mm-hmm. So literally, Shohei knows that his entire country is watching. He knows that he is one of the stars. He's up at bat first, so he's been thinking about that at bat literally all day. And on the second pitch, he takes it out. It's like this dude, so special. Mm -hmm. So, so, so special. And, you know, we're doofuses. 
uh, when it comes to baseball. I think Ty is obviously very well versed, but whenever I speak about it, it's coming from a place of complete ignorance. Never played. Well, one time, semi-pro, Frontier League, no big deal. On base percentage, 333. Mm -hmm. you, you take that as you will. But the way this guy was pitching as soon as he comes into the MLB and then hitting as soon as he comes into the MLB, it's like, this is the greatest guy of all time. This is the greatest baseball player of all time. Mm -hmm. He's better than everybody. And now he's just DHing, and they're still talking about him potentially being one of the greatest baseball players of all time. But whenever you think, is he going to pitch in the World Series? Joining us now, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. is senior MLB insider for ESPN, friend of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, light the engines. Start the jet. Jeff Basson. Yeah. 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 Jet, Gentlemen, how are you doing, pal? It's been too long. I'm doing great, guys. Uh, how are you? We've been paying attention to baseball. I don't know if you saw it. I don't know how much you've been able to listen to. I actually turned off NFL last night and watched baseball until I fell asleep. That, that's the first time ever in my life. And I just said that for a second time. I don't know if I'll say it for a third, but you needed to hear that, Jet. I need you to hear that. I appreciate that. Listen, I appreciate the baseball tweets. I appreciate the fact that at every stadium I go to, whether it is Yankee Stadium or Citizens what? Bank Park in Philadelphia or what? City Field, where I'm going to be night for game five of the NLCS, what? every what? place I go, they say, go back on McAfee. We need to see you talking ball there. So thank you, boys, for having really? me back. Hmm. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's great to have you here, man. Baseball has been delivering. I'm happy to hear that there's some baseball fans that watch this program as well for everything that I've said. Now, let's get into. Real, is there a lot of baseball? All right, I'm not even. See, I don't need. Hold on, hold on, like hold on, Pat, Pat, Pat. Pat, do you want to do you want to tell them what happened on the train in Philadelphia? Uh oh, that was awesome. That was a good time. That was a really good time, actually. All right, so I'm sitting there on the train in Philadelphia, and a bunch of absolute meatheads just come on. I mean, these guys, it's like 9.30 in the morning, and these guys have been drinking already. What? One of them has a bag of, like, twisted tea. He's not drinking, like, out of a can, out of a bottle. No, it's just a plastic bag. <laughs> and... And, and they're like, yo, Jeb, we, we love you on McAfee. And the drunkest one comes up. He's like, yo, bro, call McAfee. And so it's, you know, it's college game day morning. And I'm like, all right, Pat's probably going to be busy, but I'll try. And so I call him. Doesn't pick up at all. I'm like, oh, I'm the disappointing guy. About 30 seconds later, my phone rings. And I was like, hey, fellas. And I turn around and I show the phone to him. And it says, Pat McAfee, FaceTime and video. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. that's, it was like five there, of them. It was yeah. just five no, of them. Just screaming. All you could see was all you could see was five. There were twenty five of them. So like I had a friend who <laughs> sent me a video being taken of me showing you off to all these other people and all of them baseball fans, McAfee fans, nice. uh, incredibly toxic table fans even. Like uh, this was good. Yeah, that'd be it, it, awesome. it, yeah, we like that a lot. The reach and the reach is far and wide, boys. That's really cool. Those Johns over there in Philly, uh, we appreciate them watching along, and it was an honor to yell at my phone while they were yelling at your phone on a train over there. Uh, obviously, the Phillies don't go on a run, and we were bummed out about that because we're big Bryce Harper fans, and that Philly Park is obviously electrifying, and you came on, and I believe Carl Ravage came on and said, hey, that stadium over there in San Diego, also awesome. Don't worry about that. It oh, feels yeah. like everywhere that they've been, like let's talk about Cleveland last night, that setting, no atmosphere, doubt was bananas this has been above him is this what normal postseason baseball is like or does this feel like this is bigger this year jet no no this, this is what it's normally like and i, I just think really? it takes time for, really? yeah i just think it i think it takes some time for people to appreciate it and look i i think like stanley cup finals has the reputation in hockey as is being one of the best if not the best and the super bowl is the super bowl and the nba of course in march madness like october baseball to me is the best of all of them. And I think that manifested itself during the wild card series and the division series where there were close games, close fought series, dramatic moments. The LCS hasn't been all that great until that swing right there from Aaron Judge. When he knocked that ball out of the park on a line to right field, and then Giancarlo Stanton followed up with a home run himself, just a to dead center field and all of a sudden the Yankees are up four to three and it looks like they're going to run away with this series that they were leading two nothing already 
And then up steps big Christmas, John Kenzie Noel, two outs against an unhittable Luke Weaver this postseason, takes him deep, Cleveland's going wild, and then David Fry, of course, in extra innings with this Ooh. bomb off of Clay Holmes. Uh, you know, it's one of the best baseball games that you're going to see, man. It just going back and forth. And as somebody from Cleveland, I appreciate every one of those fans there. I'm, I'm still calling it Jacobs Field because I, I grew up at Progressive Field. Whoa, all whoa, whoa, of them have been the with respected, Jack. All right, I didn't know what all we're calling the same. Yeah, no, what all we call the team name? What all we calling the same? Or? Yeah, Jet. What are you? All right. Regardless, regardless of what it's called, do you guys know how long <laughs> okay. it's been since the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians whoa, whoa. have won a World Series? How long? It's been it's been since 1948. Hmm. This wow. is a team in this Browns. is a team in Cleveland. Yeah, oh, exactly. I mean, I mean, listen. Okay. Like <laughs> Cleveland sports history, I think is is even more tortured than fans realize. It's not just the drive. It's not just the fumble. It's the fact that in the 1990s, the Indians had the greatest collection of talent ever in baseball that didn't win a championship. They had Manny Ramirez. They had Jim Tomei, both Hall of Famers. They had Kenny Lofton, who probably should be in the Hall of Fame, and Roberto Alomar who is in the Hall of Fame, and Albert Bell and Carlos Baerga. I mean, it was a stacked, stacked lineup. And in 1995 and 97, they broke, you know, teenage Jeff Fasson's childhood heart by losing oh. in the World Series. Oh, no. And they, listen, if anyone deserves a World Series, we've got the biggest markets in right now. we got both New York teams. We've got the Los Angeles Dodgers. If you are rooting for a team to win right now, it should be the Cleveland Guardians because, frankly, Cleveland deserves it. Hmm. Okay, so I was, that's what I was about to ask you there while you were talking about your heartbreak as a young, just a young lad, just a just a young Jet getting his heart broken by the, the Cleveland Indians at the time, now the Cleveland Guardians. You're saying good baseball town. Cleveland, good baseball town. Obviously, it looked like it last oh, night. Yeah. I was there for what, SummerSlam? Was that what was in Cleveland? SummerSlam was yeah. in Cleveland? Yeah, uh -huh. yep. And uh, it was. The, Friday yeah. night, the Friday night SmackDown, new stadium coming to town, by the way. Probably last SummerSlam ever at that particular stadium. I don't know if people in Cleveland are pumped about that. You guys got a, you guys got a dome in Cleveland. Okay, okay, go for you guys. Mm. Hey, congratulations. Will it be retractable? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like a dog Probably house. not. A dog house. It should be. Should be. Retract. Yeah, like a dog house. Let yeah. that thing open. But the Friday night before <laughs> SummerSlam, there was a Cleveland Guardian game, and uh, I forget who they were playing, but it was a walk-off home run, I think. Fireworks, and then the streets oh, yeah. were filled within second, and it was an immediate celebration around the entire city. I mean, it was, it seems like, obviously, you talked about since 1943, so they're starving, but, like, it feels like this season has felt special for the Guardians. Is that accurate? Because I'm going back to SummerSlam, and it felt like they were talking about this potentially being the case. Yeah, because I don't know that going into this season, anyone was anticipating them making a run like this. And, look, when you get down to nothing in a series that's best of seven, it's hard to come back from. If the Guardians had lost that game yesterday, I think that they were cooked. But uh, this showed you, like, they've got fight in them. Uh, you know, David Fry was never a big prospect. And to come up in that moment, a game after, by the way, being inserted as a pinch hitter in, like, the highest leverage spot in the game and popping up on the first pitch he saw, you, you want to talk about, uh, like, some comeuppance there. It was pretty great to see uh, Cleveland get to celebrate that moment because – this is a sports town that deserves good things. And getting a good thing like yesterday, uh, you know, they hope that they can take that momentum and even the series today because it's going to be a really interesting matchup tonight when you've got Luis Heel, who hasn't pitched in 19 days, going mm -hmm. for the Yankees, and Gavin Williams, who hasn't pitched in 25 days, going for oh. the Guardians. That's what you get like this time in October, man. It, you know, it gets desperate. And one of the things that I love about the Major League Baseball playoffs is the 162 game season, right? Like that's a grind and that shows your depth and that shows your ability to stay healthy. It is a totally different game in October when all you're trying to do is get 27 outs in a day and it doesn't matter how you do it. Maybe it's with a guy who's you know going to go out there and throw one inning and then you're just going to bullpen it the whole way or maybe it's a guy who hasn't pitched in three weeks and goes and has the game of his life.
Jet, what about so the regular uh, season? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was no, going to say the regular season is a fugaze. No, you, oh, but on you, though, AJ. <laughs> uh, on you, AJ. That, hey, that was very valid. But Shohei, Jet, let's pivot to the, the Dodgers series. Oh, Dodgers, man. Mets, obviously Dodgers up 3-1. Are we going to see Shohei pitching at any point in this postseason? I don't think so. I, Why is he know, growing there? Come on. Is that your opinion or do you know? Are you, are you in with like his interpreter or anyone else? Good question. Uh, it, it has. I have asked that question, and the answer is no. Now, look, the Dodgers can change things up. Take Maybe lifts. Shohei goes to them and says, hey, I want a pitch. Like, imagine Shohei Otani coming in and, like, closing out the seventh game of the World Series. Like, that, that would be amazing. Yeah. To, but, but right now, what we're seeing from him is amazing. You know, yesterday, that home run – ended one of the weirdest streaks I've ever seen in postseason baseball. With the bases empty going into yesterday, Shohei Otani was 0 for 22 this postseason. And with runners on base, he was 7 for 9. And and you go back like into the regular season, I think the stretch, he's like 17 for 20, his last 20 plate appearances with runners on base. Guys don't hit like hitting 300 is incredible. Hitting 800 is impossible. And that's what he's been doing in the most clutch situations. And that, that's the beauty of the guy, right? We've never seen him in the MLB playoffs, but we have seen him over in Japan. And we did see him in the World Baseball Classic, which meant so much to him and to his countrymen on Samurai Japan. And the guy just steps up in big moments. Like he needs them and he has a hunger and desire for them. And having him and Mookie Betts, who went four for six and drove in four runs yesterday at the top of that lineup, like, uh, you know, after the game, Freddie Freeman, uh, himself a Hall of Famer, was saying, like, what do you do if you're a pitcher when the first two guys you're facing are Hall of Famers? Like, uh, that just has to get into your head. And no matter how well you execute, you know that a guy with Otani, a guy with Betts' talent, has the ability to beat you anyway. So this is you, you talk about mentality for the pitcher having to go against two Hall of Famers immediately to start the night or whatever. How about Shohei's mentality? I, I like all day he knew that the conversation about that for that last game was how many people watch in Japan. So like I can't yeah. stress enough. Like just as somebody who had to do a job, a profession uh, that was pretty isolated and mentally tasking, you know, kicking and punting both. Like thinking about the first one all day. Okay, he's lead off for this thing. He just heard that the entire country of Japan was watching. He is Shohei Otani. He's batting lead off. In the second pitch, he takes that thing. Just the other night, too, he puts one almost out of the stadium. It's like, this guy's a machine. That's why I hate that yeah. they're saying he's not going to pitch. Mm -hmm. Let the guy pitch. If he wants to pitch, let the guy pitch because it feels like he can do no wrong. I mean, he is the Japan thing in the numbers. Now, that's obviously great news for the Dodgers. But is is the MLB working on something much much bigger there? Which like how to? Because I see Shohei's face in every behind every batter's box. It's like he's got some headphones on, and then you can get some Shohei this and Shohei that. It's like are they prof? They're profiting obviously off of all of that. But like, how's the relationship Enormous. between MLB and Japan? Relationship is great. I mean, this look this off season, Pat. There's a chance that a guy named Roki Sasaki could be coming over here. Roki Sasaki is 22 years old. He throws 100 miles per hour, and he might have the best stuff of anyone in the world. And we're in the middle of Japan's, I'm not going to say takeover of Major League Baseball, but this is a golden era for Japanese players in the sport. Remember, yesterday, Yoshinobu Yamamoto started for the Mets, or for the Dodgers, He's rather. A $325 million pitcher uh -oh. who came over this offseason. Oh, and then yeah. you have Otani leading off. <laughs> Guys, stop it. What the hell? <laughs> Jet, come on. Oh, we're, just, we're just thinking it out. We're, thinking out. we're riding away you with you here. Well, talking. not that wave, but. I just, I just need different. to rephrase it. We're going we're gonna to start over completely here. All right. Um, this, is, this is Scott Hall. This is Scott Hall. <laughs> yeah. These are walking in I, through the arenas. <laughs> I was going to say, if Otani comes out uh, before his at bat today and just goes like for life, it's just going to be the best. Uh, we got the that? outsiders coming in right now. Dude. For life? Come on. <laughs> Did I not do the, the for life? No, no, you're good. You're good. You nailed it. You nailed it. You got to get Yeah, my, hands, my right. hands were a little twitchy. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was Yeah, great. it's because you're a writer. I, a writer. You got a lot of writing. You got to hate about baseball. It's, it's, it's those types of things. Ty <laughs> has a question for you. But, and also, let's not forget Shota Imanaga, friend of the. Is that his name? Yes. Mm -hmm. Friend of the program. Nailed it. Thank you. 
I thank you. He's uh, he's a. I love it for everything. Mm -hmm. I really do because it seems like everybody ever, that Korean game and we watch Korean league. They love baseball. It's like here we go. Shohei seems to Ope, be. Hey, open. I mean, opening day next year is going to be the Dodgers in Japan. Like it's nice. It, Dodgers. They Dodgers can fill up a, Japan, like, are they going to do like a? Uh, go ahead. Like a football state. You could sell no, they, a couple they, hundred thousand tickets to that ice oh, if you really wanted. No, no, no okay, question no, about it. It's just. I, I, you know what? I, I just Brilliant. love the fact that that baseball's – it has been an international game really like since integration, right? You have players coming from the Dominican Republic. You have players coming from Venezuela. You have players coming from Japan, from Korea. Like I'm not going to say that baseball is the world sport, but when you look at the construction of the population of the players inside the game – it sure feels a lot like it because you have guys coming from hmm. everywhere. For life. life. Speaking of, I've been taking up way too much time. Uh, Ty has a bunch of questions for you about actual baseball stuff. That a baby Ty. Jet, going back to Yankees Guardians, uh, I, I don't really know how to feel today because it was such a good game that it's kind of hard to be all poo-poo that they yeah. lost. But I don't know if it's a bigger deal that the Guardians came back and won that game or if like the Yankees are really – like that's a backbreaker. But in terms of tonight, who do you think the uh, advantage goes to considering that – both teams' bullpens are kind of taxed after last night, and I know Cleveland's bullpen obviously has been unbelievable. We have some stats from Hembo here. Class A, during the regular season, appeared in 74 games, and he only had five earned runs and gave up two homers. And in the postseason, he's thrown five games, and he already has six earned runs, and he's given up three homers. Um, and I know that they won last night, so it's not as big of a deal, but I just think back to I think yesterday it was 19 years, the date. Brad Lidge gives up that that bomb to Pujols in the NLCS when he's on the Astros, and he's kind of the, never the same guy after that. Like, do you think uh, the cracks in the Cleveland bullpen, like, will that continue to show? And on the flip side, like the Yankees bullpen stunk for the last month and a half of the season, and they've been yep. lights out. Like, how do you see that playing out tonight? There have been very few relievers in this postseason, Ty, on whom Aaron Boone has relied. He has leaned heavily on Luke Weaver. He's, a, he's he been has unbelievable. Leaned heavily on Clay Holmes, and he has leaned heavily on Tim Hill, and that's about it. And so I think, and you know, Tommy Canley's pitched a, a fair number of games too, but I think we're going to see the depth potentially of the Yankees' bullpen tonight and just how much it can stand up to the pressure. Uh, like the Guardians, in the meantime, they have like four of the top 10 relief pitchers just in innings used during the regular season. Like Stephen Vogt leaned on his bullpen uh, to the extent where you wondered, and we've been wondering for months now, like, are they going to wear down? Are they going to wear out at any point? And you wonder if that's what we're seeing right now. And so I, I anticipate today is going to be a pretty high scoring game. I mean, there's a chance that Luis Healer, Gavin Williams is locked in and rested and goes out and one of them throws the game of his life. But it feels like with where the bullpens are right now, with the types of starting pitchers that we're going to have tonight, uh, it feels like it has a chance to be a slugfest. Okay, so if it is a slugfest, that I think that favors the Yankees a little bit more. Have you it heard? Does. Have you heard anything in terms of what they might do lineup wise? Like Rizzo last night was kind of weird. He looked unbelievable in games one and two, and he's obviously got the broken fingers he's dealing with. Boone wanted to give him a day off, but then he inserts him late into the game, and he kind of looks shaky at first base. I don't know about that. And then obviously Austin Wells, who was unbelievable all season, has looked like shit during the postseason, but he comes in late. Uh, do you know what the Yankees are going to do lineup wise tonight? Uh, you know, Aaron Boone has been very, like, hesitant to mess around with his lineup a whole lot. He moved Giancarlo Stanton up, so uh, that seemed to be the, the right thing to do in the moment. But, uh, I, you know, I, I think that he is going to continue to just lean rather than on the bottom of his lineup, lean on those guys at the top to carry him. And, uh, it, you know, m you don't mess with success, right? And he has had a very successful run this postseason so far, and – Look, last night for the Yankees, it was it was not a great night. It, it did not end well. But uh, the fact that they made the comeback when they did, and particularly the fact that Aaron Judge is hitting now. Like, remember, the Yankees were winning before Judge got hot. 
Now Judge is hitting like his MVP type self, and it's the kind of bat that can carry them a long way. And so I, I get your concern with the bottom of the lineup, but to me, it's what the top is doing that's the most important thing. Jet, who's going to win both these series? Yeah, good question. Who's going to win? No, who's going to win it all? Yeah, and then yeah. who wins it all? What's the, what's the World Series matchup going to be, and then who wins the World Series? I, I think the odds there. I think the odds there are correct. I think the the Dodgers have just asserted themselves as the dominant team in this series. And uh, look, the I, I hate counting the Mets out, guys, because look at what they've done all year. They have been the cardiac kids. They have been. They have been the comeback kids. You got a jet. Uh, yeah, you got oh, it. Yeah. You got a jet. You come, the comeback through. boys. Yep. We hear you. Jed, a couple of the Texas football boys were just yelling at me right there, so I, I apologize. I, ah, I no worries. No worries. There was worries. about a 320-pounder down there with a good beard screaming up here. <laughs> I don't know exactly who he is. Got a nice, bellowing voice, though. Seemed confident. Might need to take that into account when I'm picking a game tomorrow. But nonetheless, you like the Dodgers. Huh? Minus 130? That seems early to have be that big of a favorite going into this thing. I mean, it's a three to one series advantage, Pat. The Mets need to win tonight and they need to go into Los Angeles and take two games there. That is a tough row to hoe. Yes. Um, as, as for the ALCS, it. It, it, it feels like the, the <laughs> Guardians at plus 1100 seems a little high. Whoa. Especially, Whoa. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, I do think at the end of the day, Whoa. I do think at the end of the day Whoa. that the Yankees are going to win this series. I am from Cleveland. I, I do think at the end of the day, the Yankees are going to take this series, but this thing could be tied up tonight. And once you get down to a three-game series in baseball, it's a crapshoot. Like, the best team, Anything. guys, it's, it's kind of what I like about the baseball postseason. It's not always the best team that wins. It's the team that gets hottest. It's the team that's playing best at that particular yeah. moment. So while I do think the Yankees are going to get to the World Series – uh, you know, I, I think a lot of who wins the World Series depends on just how long of a time they have off, how they can reset their rotation. Um, I think the Yankees are probably going to go in as very slight favorites, especially if they can finish off the Guardians here in a couple of games. But uh, if it's Yankees-Dodgers, I mean, for Major League Baseball, there could not be a better matchup, Right. You have the two biggest teams in the history of the sport facing off against one another, the two most successful teams. You have Aaron Judge versus Shohei Otani. You have New York versus L.A. Like it, it, it really doesn't get a lot better than that. Truly. Agreed. Especially with Shohei leading off with that big-ass bat. How big is his bat? How big is his bat? How big is his bat? Shohei's wood. Normal. Drive to center field? Yeah, yeah how big is his wood? 34. How big is what it? Is kind 32, of wood is it? 34, 36? Yeah. Pretty Maple? diesel. I think, I think 34, 31. That's a big bat. Hey, this guy's got a telephone <laughs> pole, honey. That's a big bat. Wow. That's show big enough, bat. isn't it? That's what they said about show enough. Show hey, Tawny. Cool. Big old bat on him. That guy. All right. We appreciate the hell out of you, Jet. You're the man. Boys, it is always a pleasure. It's great being with you. And uh, enjoy that game this weekend, Pat. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. 